When does the makeup person get here? Oh, they're coming at three. Yeah. Oh, three? <laughs> Hollywood people are always late. Are we ready? I'm ready for my close up, <laughs> Mr. Mr. DeMille. My name is William Edward Stovall, and I'm 94 years old. What year were you born? 1924. Were you checking on me? You didn't match yourself. What's, what's one of your earliest memories? One of my earliest memories was climbing into, up to a window and peeking in a, a building where my dad was teaching aircraft engines to Annapolis graduates in Norfolk, Virginia, or Hampton Roads, Virginia, actually. And where were you living at that time? Hampton Roads, Virginia, on a naval station. At, and uh, that's where the Monitor and the Merrimack fought their battle. And, and, and so we lived there, and, and then I, the only other memories I have is my dad uh, built the first radio we ever had. He built it himself from parts. And then uh, we got a Victrola where you turn the crank and with a disc and hear music and so on. So that those are the memories I have for that era. And then at what point did you move out to San Diego? When was that? I think, I think it was about 1930. My dad was uh, uh, transferred to San Diego from Virginia on the uh, USS Saratoga, the big uh, aircraft carrier. And uh, then he came back and got us, and we drove cross country in a 1927 Buick sedan my mother and my brother and I, and my dad. Do you remember anything about the trip? Very little, just, I, I, I sometimes wonder if we went across that wooden road they had in El Centro, as I've seen pictures of it and, and vaguely remember my dad mentioning something about it. But then we came into San Diego and we, we lived in, uh, in downtown San Diego for a while on Mansfield Avenue. And uh, my early memories of that was my uh, dad's squadron flying over the, our neighborhood and the old Navy biplanes and dropping little parachutes with candy on them for the kids. So, <laughs> was that for a holiday or something? Or? I don't know. Okay. So then we... Um, Didn't matter, he was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to the uh, Mansfield Avenue uh, Grammar School and uh, I was uh, up at the drinking fountain one day, and uh, a young kid came up next to me and turned out to be Harold Baker, who was a friend of mine from Hampton Roads, Virginia. His, his dad was in the Navy and had been transferred out to San Diego also. So, and we became friends for ever since till, till his passing. So. Well, did they have Navy housing at the time? or was Not that I know of, but maybe, I don't know. We, we had a house. And um, my dad was, the uh, only thing I remember about that was that on Christmas time, my, my mother called us and said, come in quick and listen to the radio. And so we, my brother and I ran in and listened to the radio and here was Santa Claus on the radio and he says, hello, Billy boy and, and Robert. And he says, what do you want for Christmas? And we were all excited and telling Santa what we wanted for Christmas. Turned out my dad had hooked up a roll speaker and it was hiding in the next room. <laughs> so that's my, about my only memory of that era. Mm. And so then uh, he retired from the Navy and we moved out to uh, Grossmont in the La Mesa area. And he bought uh, two acres of avocados and uh, they were young avocado trees. And so then uh, he also uh, hooked up a uh, uh, large two-story uh, chicken house he built and uh, we had hundreds I don't know I sometimes say a thousand chickens but I know that's too many we had but we had hundreds of chickens and we sold eggs collected eggs and sold them to a, to a wholesaler in La Mesa and we uh, uh, worked in the avocado grove my brother and I uh, we helped my dad to water the trees and and 
and uh, do work around there and feed feed the chickens and so on. And the part I remember that I didn't care for too much was every so often my dad had my brother and I scrape all the chicken manure out of the, the building and uh, collect it in big piles. But uh, it had to be done, so somebody had to do it. So we were kind of slave labor, I guess. About how old were you then? Probably six, seven, seven or so. So, uh, but anyway, then I went to uh, La Mesa Grammar School, and uh, and later uh, that was in downtown La Mesa, and then later to uh, Grossmont High School, and I graduated from Grossmont High School in uh, 1941, and uh, I wanted my dad wanted me to go to college, so uh, he. He had encouraged me to to take summer school classes, which I did. So I got out of high school in three and a half years, and because uh, I was a mid-year student, mid-year student, uh, you didn't graduate in September and all those things, or go to school in September, or you didn't, and you had to uh, take special courses as as a mid-year student. They had to fit you in somewhere, and so uh, by going three and a half years to high school, I managed to get uh, set up where I could go to college and in the September class, rather than in, in February or sometime like that. So uh, it was, uh, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't a good enough student to be automatically admitted to college. In those days, you had to have a, a B average at least to be considered for college, and mine was probably a B minus or C plus. And uh, but I got a letter from the um, registrar, and he said my school grades were, or my actually my uh, application for admission was high enough that uh, he'd take the, me on as a as a chance as as a provisional student. So that's how I ended up at San Diego State College in 1941. And so then my big experience there was uh, going to the freshman picnic at Warner Springs. Uh, and uh, I was riding with my neighbor and best friend, Jack Nolan. And uh, we were driving our way up to uh, Warner Springs when the car ahead of us, a couple other guys we knew, pulled over suddenly and said the Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor. And we knew where Pearl Harbor was because our dads had been there. And uh, so we went on to the uh, picnic, had a good time, little realizing how this would affect our future lives, really. 